Today is Wednesday. It is the 13th of April and this box arrived for me by UPS yesterday and I'm going to open up see what's inside. And I have a pretty good idea what it is but let's just see. Well, this is a smaller box. Well, they wrap this stuff pretty good. Well, I have three smaller boxes. We're looking at a new tool. They call it a 4-in-1 painter's uh, accessory tool uh, by Saker, S-A-K-E-R. And, oh, it must have been a little over a week ago, I received an email and the people said, you know, we've, we've watched a few of your videos and, uh, well, we, we like what you do and we have this new product and they sent me a few links of videos that were made by other YouTube creators and they said, if we ship you uh, this new product, would you try it out and make a video and, you know, put it on your channel? And I did watch the videos and I thought, yeah, it looks pretty handy. I've never seen this kind of thing before, but it looked like it might be handy. So I said, sure, why not? So they've shipped them to me. And so here goes the video. <laughs> First of all, let's open one of these up. Looks pretty dandy. I don't want anybody to get into these things. They pack them really well. So you get the box and you open it up. And you end up with some of these uh, these units, and there's some kind of plastic. There they are. So one box contains four of these. Everything's well wrapped. So each box is four, and you get a little a package of some screws and a little instruction manual or pamphlet to show you how to use them. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do here. I'm going to start using these. We'll figure it out and uh, well let, let's see how handy they are. It just so happens that I have an opportunity to try out these uh, painter jigs, accessory jigs if you want to call them that because I have to build some uh, more storage shelf space in my shop. And I have some used plywood panels here that are gonna be part of the shelf system. And it's old plywood that I've reclaimed. They're all cut to the proper size. I did a light sanding on each side. Uh, there's a little bit of primer on one side, a lot of it's faded and there's nothing on the other. So I'm going to pre-paint them before I start assembly because it just makes life easier down the road. And so I have my jigs, I have the screws that came with it, and apparently what I do is I take one of the screws and I put it through the hole right here in the jig in the center. I line it up with a mark that I made, and uh, you go ahead and you screw it in. That's pretty simple. Okay, so I've done that, and I want to do that at each end. I'm going to put four of them on here, and you'll see why in just a moment. Let me see, get that lined up in a proper space. Yeah, that looks like it. And I'm not going to have you sit through watching me do all of them, because... sort of like sitting around watching paint dry and you don't want to have to watch that. So I have one at each end and then I do the other side one at each end. And I have three panels here and I have just enough to do them all. So I'll be back in a moment when I finish putting these together. Okay, each panel is set up with these 
jigs on each end. And the idea is you paint one side, either spray painting, roller, brush, whatever. And while the paint is wet, and you want to do the other side, this just pivots. You set that down. No problem, you can do the other side. And I'll do that in just a moment. But now you have more than one. You can do the same thing and you can paint both sides. But then you can take your, your jigs, because if you don't have a lot of room, you can stack them like this. And there's a little bit of an interlock so it won't shift and slide off on you. But we have another panel. And once again, there are interlocks. And we can just stack this right up. And of course, if you have if you have more of these jigs, you can just keep stacking them up, stacking them up. The panels can be whatever size you want, and they'll stack as long as they're all uniform, that is the, the same size, same dimensions. Makes it pretty easy. So I'm going to try painting these up. What I'm doing here is I'm using some very old paint I had kicking around as a primer. Because these shelves are just going to be out in the shop. I don't need anything of beauty or any special finish. I just want to protect the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to coat these. And just using, actually I might just leave it this color, maybe just a couple of coats of this. So it will both be the, the primer and the finish paint. I had about a half a gallon left over and it's a few years old. And it'll work just fine as uh, something I'm going to use as a piece of shop uh, furniture or, or fixture. And this plastic, uh, these jigs, I, I get a little paint on them, it doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, you will if you're going to spray paint. So I'll just go ahead and get this coated. And then I can flip it around and do the other side. out of the way and before I showed you how I flipped that around I just picked it up and it, and it pivots of course this isn't very heavy so it's a pretty light panel but this would come in handy if you have a, mu a much bigger panel if you were doing a door, that sort of thing. Now I can go ahead and do this other side. And I'm not going to ask you to sit through this while I coat it. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'll bring the other ones on, stack them, coat those. And I'll be back in a moment. I finished coating both sides of each and every panel. And now I can just let them sit here to dry. And one of the big advantages I've found is that, well, if, if you've watched many of my videos and you've seen some of my projects inside the shop, you know my shop is very, very crowded and there's not much room. So in a relatively small workspace, I can do multiple panels and I don't have to try to find some place to lay them around all over. And putting them outside is not always an option because we get a lot of rain. So this actually works out pretty well. One thing I did find, though, and I think is uh, much better when you're especially using a roller is instead of placing these jigs right up against the wood as per the instructions I think next time when I use these I'll place one or two washes in between the jig and the wood when I put the screw in what that does is it sets the jig back a little bit away from your work you get more complete coverage makes it easier for it to turn and it just works out much better and when, you're, uh, when you have a roller, you get complete coverage right near the jig. Uh, sometimes you can't get close enough when the jig is so tight up against the work. Uh, you don't get complete coverage on the edges. You'd have to use a brush to touch up. But just uh, one or two washes in between, well, that'll do the trick and make it work much better. 
I wanted to show you another use for these uh, these little jigs. You make racks out of them. And all I did, you can see here, the only thing I did here is I just took a little piece of wood and put them between each piece here. And then I just stack them up. Like so. So it makes a, a simple rack. And I stacked up another one here. And you can kind of, you can put them wherever you want. You can space them apart very wide or narrow depending on what you have. The advantage to this is that when you have different pieces of uh, molding or trim, what you can do is different shapes and so forth. You can just put them in the rack here. And with molding and trim, usually if it's going to be painted or coated with a varnish, it's only going to be, you know, one side. Uh, you're not going to, or, or maybe two or three sides, you're not going to see the back part that goes against a wall or, you know, whatever, wherever you're going to put it. So these can be different lengths and different shapes and sizes. And you can just lay them across these racks here once you've coated them or painted them or just do it in place. And then you can just let it sit here and dry. And once again, the advantage here is you're not taking up a whole lot of shop space with this stuff laid out all over the, you know, everywhere. And uh, that makes it very handy. Normally when you put these together, this little indentation here, the screw goes in this way. But also notice that there are some little grooves here. I don't know if that camera will pick that up drops down a little bit so that provides another use for these as you can see here that groove is if I turn it around backwards I put it on like this and put the screw through it kind of locks into this this panel here now this panel imagine this could be much bigger it could be wider and it could have an oddball shape at the top now by turning those plastic pieces around so that those grooves go on either side of the panel. And remember, this can be this could be much thicker and it can be a whole lot wider and might have an oddball shape up here. So you can't uh, use it the way you might use with big panels using a few of these jigs. Just the two, it gives you a base and that allows you to paint this on both sides at the same time. This is just another example of the type of use you can get from these Saker painters accessories or jigs. Well I think this wraps it up as far as the demonstration goes. I've given this a try. It works as advertised and it seems to do the trick. And it does seem to be convenient especially in a small shop. And if you're one of the many woodworkers out there that uh, have a little side hustle. It's not your regular job, but you come home from work and at night you make a few things that you sell on eBay or Etsy or at craft shows. And you just have a small shop and you don't have a lot of room. Jigs like this, uh, they help out when you have tight spaces because that keeps you productive. One small space, you can let things dry while you're working on something else. And so, that just increases your productivity and your profit margin. So it might be well worth the investment. Do I think it's worth the money to buy these? I don't really know how much they cost. I can't answer that. And most certainly I can't make that decision for you because it's up to each individual. For some people, maybe they don't need this sort of thing. Other people, it might be worth its weight in gold. So decide for yourself. But if you're interested and you'd like to purchase these, uh, I'm going to provide you with all the pertinent information in the video description below. So just check that out. And if you can do me a favor, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. Hit that little button. Doesn't take too much effort. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the little bell so you can get notifications of each new video that comes out. Uh, that all helps me tremendously, and if you'd like to become a patron on Patreon, uh, please uh, look into that and do so. Much appreciated.
Thanks for watching.